So greetings and welcome to today's educational program, Evolving Quality Technology Tools for Growth of the MSME Sector in the Post-COVID-19 Pandemic Period by Dr. Gautam Sangupta. This is your moderator, Doug Wood, with ASQ's Quality Management Division. So today we have the distinct pleasure of hearing from uh, Gautam Sangupta. Please join me in welcoming him. Uh, Gautam Sangupta is a professional member of ASQ, and he's considered a specialist in quality concepts and total quality management. He's currently Vice Chancellor of Techno India University, West Bengal, India, and Chairman of the Quality Circle Forum of India, uh, Kolkata. The na a nationally recognized body propagating quality concepts in India. He's on the advisory board of uh, federation of small and medium industries, the leading body for SMEs in the eastern part of India. He has institutionalized lean practices in these small medium enterprises. He's currently adjunct professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Hargapur, uh, teaching Six Sigma and Agile methodologies, and chairman of the board of the Institution of Values Registered Valuers Foundation, a premier valuation educational conglomerate in India. He's a former general manager in Phillips and former director of Calcutta Business School. Dr. Sangutta is a PMI Agile certified practitioner and a PMI certified project management professional. He has the rare distinction of turning around industries by application of total quality management skills. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Simgupta, go to, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Doug, for your kind words and good evening to all the participants. I will be deliberating on this topic, evolving quality technology tools for growth of MSME sector in post COVID-19 pandemic period. This is my background. I'm not going to read it out because dog has said more than what I deserve. In the, this session, the learning objectives are like this. Uh, you shall become familiar with MSME or SME sector. Know the perils they faced during time of COVID-19 pandemic. Understand how research methodologies could be constructed to determine the root causes of the issues faced by MSME SME sector during the time of COVID-19 pandemic, learn the solutions in form of selective set of quality technology tools and other sustainable growth strategies, which emerged from the research, appreciate their application in post pandemic scenario to sustain growth of the MSME SME sector. Before I go further, I will just take a minute or minute or so to just to explain what in this work we are meaning by MSME and SME. Now, worldwide, uh, we understand small and medium enter enterprises as SME. That's the definition worldwide. Now, in certain regions, regions of the world, we came across this, uh, this particular definition of MSME. M is micro, so they, they tried to give more emphasis on the micro segment. And that's how this came, but nevertheless, the two terms are more or less same. In some regions, the definition of the MSME is based on investment and turnover. But in most of the part of the world, the definition is based on number of employees engaged in that particular enterprise. So that's why we have kept both the terms MSME or SME and mostly it is known SME all over the world. Now, if you look at what are the characteristics of SMEs across the globe, it's very interesting to see that this sector play a major role in most economies, particularly in developing countries. Approximately 400 million SMEs, if we include the informal sector, are the backbone of economies around the world. SMEs account for the majority of businesses worldwide and are important contributors to job creation and global economic development. They represent as much as 90% of businesses and more than 50% of employment worldwide. And if you look at the GDP, 
the 50% of GDP worldwide comes from this particular sector. Now, these numbers are significantly higher if we include the informal SMEs as well. According to estimates, 600 million jobs will be needed by 2030 to absorb the growing global workforce, which makes SME development a high priority for many governments around the world. Interestingly, in emerging markets, most formal jobs are generated by SMEs, which create seven out of 10 jobs. Now, if you look at the graph on the right, what you will see is that there are growth of SMEs are steady and it is growing, numbers are growing. Of course, this graph, what you are seeing is not considering the informal SMEs, it is only the formal SMEs. And globally, SMEs generate the largest number of new employment opportunities, as we said. SMEs are the most dynamic component. SMEs are the most dynamic components of the world economy and are essential for economic and social progress. SME sector is the largest provider of employment, as we said, and SMEs are also a major source of technological innovation. This is extremely important. In emerging markets, we see that they are the major source of technological innovation and new products as they are capable of taking risks. Now, if you see the graph on the right, you will see that how they are employing people and how the numbers are growing as far as the micro and small industries are concerned, the blue lines across all the countries of the world. And SMEs play a key role in national economies across the world, generating employment and value addition and contributing to innovation. And SMEs are central to the efforts to achieve environmental sustainability and more inclusive growth. Now, if you look at this picture at the right, you will see that it's very interesting that if you plot all the countries, you will see that on the y-axis is the employment share and on the x-axis is the value added share. And you will see most, most of the regions are falling above the horizontal line in the sense that most of the SMEs are contributing more than 50% of employment. Some are even to the extent of 75, 80%, but most of them are above 50%. Now, if we look at the value addition, which these SMEs are doing, we see a little different picture. It is ranging from say 20, 20 25% as much as 70%. So it depends on the kind of country we are in, kind of region we are in. So the contribution of SMEs vary widely across farms and across countries and sectors. So that's the key, con key conclusion of, if we analyze that, uh, is it, uh, is it uh, something which is a similar, uh, nature in all the countries, it is not. But in general, they are certainly contributing to employment more than 50%, and they are contributing value addition somewhere between 20, 25% to 70%. Now, once we said that they generate more than 50% employment, they give 50% of GDP and it represents 90% of business. But ironically, this is the sector which was hit most in the pandemic period. And what we find is that if you look at this uh, graph, you see that 64%, 60%, 51% micro, small, medium is the blue color, means strongly affected whereas the large was not so much so. It is around 40%, which was affected by the, uh, by the COVID. So the COVID has hit this particular, particular segment of industry, uh, and uh, they were in a great uh, trauma, I would say, during that time 
uh, what we witnessed during the time of pandemic. So the question came that if this segment is so important for us, this, this gives us employment, gives us GDP, gives us business, then why and what we should do to prevent this kind of catastrophe in future? And that's the purpose of this deliberation of this study and uh, to come to some meaningful conclusions that how do we really uh, bear them out and how do we help them in, in future by developing certain strategies. So what we did was we went further and tried to see that which was most affected area in the world as far as the SMEs uh, getting affected during the time of pandemic. And we found no place of the world was spared. Most countries were heavily affected by the pandemic, but the worst results are expected to come from Africa, Southeast Asia, and in general from emerging countries. And you look at this color and you see this is the region, the Africa and the Southeast Asia which were very badly affected. And many of the SMEs were closed during the pandemic. Many skills were lost. Many people, uh, the skill sets which uh, were developed over years were lost. So naturally, our sampling, when, when we did the analysis, uh, we constructed a very simple research and uh, uh, Many of my uh, PhD scholars in the university, we pressed them into this job to collect primary data. And what we found was that this, uh, uh, we need to, uh, although the strategies are to be developed in a global platform, but implementation we did mostly in those areas where they were affected more. So at this stage, we thought that we need to construct a research to understand mostly through the respondent analysis to understand that what, what, what is that we should do? What are the strategies we should formulate to serve this very important sector, which gives the highest level of employment, highest level of GDP, and most of the businesses. So we constructed, uh, research techniques, which uh, we, we have learned in quality management. Uh, one we took as a paired comparison matrix and one we took a decision evaluation matrix. And there were 225 respondents. Most of the respondents were global SME units, global multinational SME experts, and few were institutions teaching and consulting in SME domain. Responses from the survey were analyzed statistically and finally we came across 12 key factors which the people the respondents said need to be further evaluated so this is the respondent demography and uh, what we found was that there was global sme units 120 global multinational of 15 SME experts 27, SME consultants 32, and SME educational institute 31 makes a total of 225 respondents who, who were taken in our survey. And through various methods like focus group interview, the qualitative research methods mainly, focus group interviews, and, uh, and uh, Delphi. We then converged the proposals and it came to around it came to around 12 proposals, which the respondents uh, gave us to further analyze, which, uh, which were as much as if you look at the proposal number 12, that it changed the labor force. That was also one of the proposals. And then these 12 proposals, we took it forward and we tried to create a criteria to evaluate these proposals. So the criteria were again given by the respondents and our job was to evaluate the criteria. So what we did was we find a 
pair comparison criteria matrix, major difference we gave three points, medium difference two points, minor difference one point, and no difference, no difference, uh, you know, the, this was uh, zero. Then we, the pair comparison table we were saying, and then based on these marks, we may put the scores of each of these evaluation matrix, each of the criteria, and the ranks. These marks and the ranks were then taken in a decision matrix where the, every proposal was voted by the respondents, multiplied by the weightage, and final marks came here. So it went on like this, and we totaled it and again ranked it. Uh, for example, one of the rank, the high rank was on better visualization of the business. People felt that they have to look at the business from end to end because, because they do not have, unlike the large industries who have the capability of various uh, softwares and the analytical tools, these uh, SMEs, particularly the micro, SME, micro uh, level uh, MSMEs, they don't have those capabilities. So there is a lack of, uh, on their part, to visualize the business from end to end. And in time of pandemic, what happened was the entire chain was lost. People did not understand what is the demand and what is the, what is the supply and what is the demand. Entire demand supply chains were disrupted. So they lost the vision and therefore times to come, they have to have a good visualization of the business. So it went on and we, we, we ranked all the 12 proposals through this decision matrix. And then finally, finally, what we did was we uh, made, made this table of the decision matrix and try to find out that which is that which is more important and which is that which is not so much important. Now, if we look at the results of the recommendation, what we found was that there are seven key recommendations which, it, which emerged, and those were better visualization of business, quick response to market change, value-driven lean process, faster decision-making, cutting down wastes, reduction of WIP, and less paper, more digital. So these were the recommendations which came out out of this research that these are the, these are the details which we look to strategize and try to understand that which one should be uh, which one should be addressed to one of the area which uh, we found was that a agile mindset need to be inculcated and agile mindset need to come within this uh, within this group of uh, msme and uh, uh, particularly they have to perform in the post-pandemic era. So agile, agile was one of the key, key uh, word which we came across and we found not many are actually aware of what is, what is agile. We refer back to the four values of the Agile Manifesto. Um, these we borrowed from uh, PMI, and, uh, and it's a very interesting thing which they have said, uh, that individual and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, respond to change over following a plan. So this mindset is required to be uh, put inside the inside the uh, in the minds of the people who are driving these businesses, and if we can do that, it it sounds to be uh, sounds to be a little philosophical, 
but we actually implemented this. So when I come to implementation, I will show you how it really happened. And this addresses the addresses the strategy three, four, five, and seven, which the uh, which came out after the research. And we, when we talk about agile mindset, we mean the values. There are four values which are normally, you know, spoken here, and twelve principles and number of practices. So SME improvement areas addressed were quick response to market change and faster decision making. This leads to this needs extensive training on the part of. Uh, micros in the small industries to bring them to an agile mindset. Now, the relationship if we look at between agile manifesto values, principles, and common practices, agile is a mindset informed by the agile manifesto's values and principles. As we said, those values and principles provide guidance on how to create, uh, create and respond to change and how to deal with uncertainty. The embodiment of mindset, values, and principles defined, which is termed as the agile approach. The various agile methodologies which are in use today share common roots with the agile mindset, values, and principles. These relationships can be applied effectively to the improvement areas of quick response to market changes and faster decision making, which our research showed that MSME is suffering from, particularly the smaller uh, part like micros and small industries and some of the some of the some of the practice which we implemented in the samples which i will describe a little later was we said that information radiator you know this is one of the example of information radiator burn down chart burn up chart etc which talks about how you are progressing vis a vis the your 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 uh, objectives of the company like uh, and it is a it is a radiator uh, you know instead of looking into the status report and voluminous uh, reports which normally we do in large companies we found that many of the uh, msme the heads of the msme are from large companies so they have instituted those methodologies of systems, processes, uh, KPIs, et cetera, et cetera, and reports and et cetera, which doesn't really work. What we found was in our sample units that you need to have a quick uh, uh, radiator, which you radiate to everybody, including the people on the shop floor. What's the promptness and how are you doing? And just update these charts and let everybody look at it, including the people in the shop floor, the bottom bottommost people in the shop floor, and understand that where are the gaps and how to work on the gaps. So, so we found that Kanban, although it is widely spoken, but it is not much used in the, in the uh, MS, MSMEs, because most of the MSMEs, when we studied them in detail, we found they're shifting. Many of them have shifted to, uh, shifted to, IT, they're mostly working on IT uh, environment. And uh, they were at loss, the how do we really implement Kanban in an IT environment? And uh, that's, that's the shift which is needed. And uh, th this example of Kanban board, which we are showing here, is based on an IT industry only. <laughs> they're the stories, we call it uh, user stories in IT industries. The user stories are ready develop and you test and you develop system test and done and you see these are the numbers which are given the WIP limits so there is a need that this Kanban is used uh, and it addresses the strategy six which the respondent could talk spoke about reduction of WIP but we found the mindset is more on a manufacturing and WIP and, the, the, and they don't really understand how to implement this uh, actually in a uh, IT setup, information technology setup, which many of the micro setups, they are on information technology setup. And we found that there is a, uh, there is a very effective way 
of uh, understanding that what is your <clears throat> your scheduled performance index and post performance index. How are you performing vis-a-vis -vis the deliveries? And how are you performing vis-a-vis -vis the cost? And we found that earned value, uh, which we use in agile uh, framework, could be a good use for our uh, MSMEs. And if you radiate this information radiator, we call it, you will see amazing results coming in. Better visualization of business. You will have to visualize the entire business in one common platform where people are walking in, seeing, taking quick action and understanding how end-to-end -end your business is performing. We also uh, saw that cumulative flow diagram, and if you, this is a stack diagram basically, and if you, if you uh, constantly update this diagram, you see what is the response time, lead time, cycle time, work in queue, remaining work, completed work, and we found that this helps tremendously for them to become lean in understanding and agile in their understanding and track their work continually. So it helps in strategizing, addressing the strategies which evolve out of the seven strategies, one and five, better visualization of business and reduction of working losses. We found the concept of lean. Normally, when we talk about lean, we we the back of the mind we think of Toyota production system, and that's the that's the start of lean. And we tried to see that how it gets reflected when we talk about a uh, agile uh, framework or a MSME micro framework and an IT framework. And we found there are same uh, processes, but your know, understanding has to be a little different. Eliminate waste, of course, we have been talking in uh, TPS. Uh, amplify learning, we have been talking. Decide as late as possible is something many people didn't understand. Now, what is means is that uh, in a, in a post-COVID scenario, your customer to whom you are giving the goods or the services, they do not even know where they are landing to. And they want quick delivery, shorter time, and uh, you know the uh, shorter supply chains, and this they will ask for change even at the late late cycle of the delivery. They may come and say, "Hey, this is not what I said so, but I want something different. Can you help me out?" And the MSME's job is to enhance the competitiveness of the customer, end consumer, customer, and the stakeholders. Now, how do you really do that? If you have uh, a program and if you pursue that program, irrespective of what is your customer feeling, then you are not in sync with your customer. So we said decide as late as possible, sync with the customer. This is only saying sync with the customer. Sync as much as you can with the customer and give him the competitive advantage to fight in the market. Because if you are not giving him the competitive advantage, then he is not there, and if he is not there, you are not there. And deliver as fast as possible in an iterative way. You deliver continually, continuously, and deliver as fast as possible. And empower the team, of course, we have been talking about. Uh, build integrity in and optimize the whole. So these are some of the training which they needed to understand what is this subject we are talking about. and why we should accept a change even in the late part of the uh, development cycle. And then we always refer to this great uh, philosophy of uh, Toyota and this great book, The Machine That Changed the World, authored by Umag Jones and Daniel Roos, which says half the hours of human effort in the factory, half the defects in the finished product, one third of the hours of engineering effort and have the factory space for the same output. A tenth or less in process inventory will all evaporate if we are following this principle. And this is a very uh, traditional me method, which we all know of a TPS, which, is the, which has taught us what is lean. And it talks about defect, overproduction, overprocessing, waiting, motion, inventory, and transportation needs to be completely understood and we found that, that this is not uh, well understood 
by many of the SMEs and particularly when we talk about the uh, IT companies. And what we found was that the lean is more adaptable in SMEs, vis-a-vis -vis large corporations. Because of the custom approach, SMEs can offer a more personalized and customized service. With large businesses, there is often a one-size-fits-all mentality. And small businesses can use this to their advantage by taking the time to get to know the potential customer. And therefore, evaluating their needs and developing a solution that is perfect for the customer. Flexibility and less bureaucracy, that's what something good uh, with SMEs. And the creativity is much of a higher order. And adaptability is again quite good. Speed and agility and passion with purpose. Although these are to be revamped, but these are there by the very structure of the SMEs, these are there and it is easy to implement lean in those companies. And when we talk about OSTs, again, we need to look back and uh, the IT companies, because they, they are now uh, in the developing world, they are now op occupying a larger spaces. We need to look at them. So in a software companies, uh, the, the OSTs means partially done work. Extra feature, if you look at the traditional uh, Toyota way of uh, defining it, we call over processing. So it is extra feature. We call it gold plating in a software industry. Relearning is a very costly affair. And we need to do that. But how do we do that? Handoffs. Quite often, what they do, they put their hands off and uh, it's a waste. Delays, task switching, and defects. So we can relate to the seven wastes of lean manufacturing with what is happening in the software industry. So lean in software, we said that waste can manifest in the form of extra documentation that customers do not need. Just do the bare documentation, bare minimum documentation which the customer needs. Handoffs between different role like analysts and developers, developers to testers and tester to release management teams, unnecessary feature and complexity in code, Code that is not tested, built and integrated. Blockers in processes like approvals and sign-offs. Ineffective meetings like those without a clear agenda and expected outcome and timekeeping. So those, uh, those uh, learnings from large industries, those uh, uh, minutes of the meetings, task teams, and always do not support. And we need to go for more on information radiators, as I said earlier. Then we found there is a great advantage with our study, the samples which we studied, we found that they are the people who are doing a good job and whom we are pursuing to do a good job are all green. There's a great linkage between the lean and the green philosophy because it is all, uh, it, it can't be practiced like you do it in a sequential manner, you do lean and then you go to green. No, you do it together. And that's what we found our samples what we studied and when we pursued it further we found there is a great need of the green revolution to take place in msme because many of the regions they are neglected and they are they are the source of uh, concern as far as the green is concerned and therefore we need to look at this aspect without that they cannot really come up and compete in the marketplace at this point of time we thought that we also look at the quality technology tools because the in its very definition, if we look at quality technology tools, we found that pre-pandemic quality technology tools, all are not effective and some are to be replaced by lean, customer focused and easy to implement set of tools. So here again, we uh, created a respondent group. Here the respondents were mostly the QTT practitioners who are practicing QTT. And we uh, put a group and used the uh, methods of, uh, you know, focus group interview and uh, Delphi, etc. And we identified 
48 SMEs uh, for a duration of 12 months, and we applied the results on them. It is still continuing. The some of our students at those at those locations collecting data and trying to analyze what improvements it really brought uh, into their system and results before and results after were measured. Now, what are the QTTs we are talking about? So we, the respondent groups, G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, G6, G7, they looked at all the current uh, way of working of the quality technology tools, and they said they voted for it. So if we look at five A's of visual management, everyone voted for it with respect to MSME. And they said, yes, this should be further strengthened. Kaizen, yes, they said, that's what we need to do. Quality circle, everybody did not vote for it in its traditional format. Lean quality circle, yes, people voted for it. Kanban, everyone voted. Ishikawa diagram, everyone voted. Pareto, everyone voted. Six Sigma, not many takers. They said it should be Lean Six Sigma. Although it is quite a known phenomenon, but we found in a MSME where we are working, they are not so much familiar. TPM, they said not many takers, and they said we should go for a simplified TPM. PDCA, they all said yes. Scatter plots, well accepted, very simple tool. You just plot and you see the trend. You can understand what is going to happen. You need not to go for elaborate time series analysis. Brainstorming, yes. SMED, POCA, UK, yes. Flow diagrams, yes. And histograms, yes. So you're seeing a great shift. There are some of the tools, uh, the opinion was, are not so good in a post-pandemic period. Kaizen all said yes. Change for the good. Japanese term, which signify small change, continuous improvement. Kaizen projects are short and effects are very good. Now, when we look at quality circle, and many we found are still following uh, the uh, pre-pandemic quality circle methods, which are uh, 10 steps very rigidly formed, and they are very, uh, you know, to be minuted, written down, et cetera, et cetera. And then the opinion was, no, you go for LQC, lean quality circle. Lean quality circle is often formed with cross-functional resource. Normally in quality circle, we don't go for cross-functional resource. Going away from fundamental rigid principles of fixed regular formal meetings and following only the essential steps resulting into lesser manpower deployed. In MSME, they, they, they don't have manpower. MSME, many MSMEs work with two, three, four, five people. So success of LQC depends on knowledge transfer, coaching and mentoring of grassroots employees. So that's the challenge. You need to mentor them, coach them. And so lean quality circle, the respondents prefer lean quality circle over the traditional quality circle, since it is an improved concept, less time consuming, less resources, and interdisciplinary. Lean Six Sigma, we all know, uh, but um, the, the knowledge was not so firm in many of the MSMEs. And uh, as we know that the Six Sigma uh, basically uh, attacks the variations, and the lean gives you speed, flow, and cost. In an MSME setup, we need to combine both this. And we need to practice more of Lean Six Sigma. And we found many were not doing so. And that was resulting into a problem. They have hard Six Sigma. There are Six Sigma projects, but the Six Sigma projects are very lengthy. It is not giving result as far as the customer is concerned. So they need to combine Lean with Six Sigma and, and practice uh, Lean Six Sigma more. We found that total productive maintenance and in a conventional pillars of total productive maintenance, as you know, there are eight pillars like autonomous maintenance, focused improvement, plan maintenance, quality maintenance, early equipment management, training and education, safety, health and environment, administration and office TPM. Many region uses different uh, words, but more or less this. And how does it really, how will it work? Because there are many 
micros who do not have, a, have even eight people. Now, this kind of arrangement essentially says that these are all, you know, standalone, like pillar one is looked after by an expert, pillar two, another like that, and there is a management coordinator who does it at the top. But you can't afford, you don't have too many people, so you have to vertically, horizontally integrate it instead of vertically creating the pillars. And that's what we said, the simplified total productive maintenance is required. In the conventional TPM model, as depicted in the previous slide, eight pillars focus on eight different aspects and thus operate in eight separate compartments, needing a management person to coordinate, which tends to be a flappy top-down organization. A simplified TPM is the need of the hour for SME sector, but the pillars are integrated and the focus is top-driven as well as bottom-up. And what we did was we picked up 48 MSMEs, and we picked up from those zones, which I showed in the, in the previous slide, which was most affected during the time of uh, pandemic. And 32 of them were picked from India, four from Bangladesh, three from Nepal, two in Bhutan, and seven in Sri Lanka. The question is, will the, the, the seven uh, approach of the seven strategy, will it work all over the world? Yes, it will. But we did the implementation and we looked at the result based on the, this sample uh, which we created because, uh, because the reason is that they were most badly affected and we need to see the result fast. Uh, can they come out of the, uh, come of the crisis? If we do this in other region, this will be similar but may not be giving the similar quantum impact which you are seeing here. But certainly the impact will be there. Maybe a varied, with a little varied, uh, you know, dimension. What we found was in our sample study over a year, still it is continuing. Our students are there monitoring this scenario. We found that the number of customers went up, 160 to 197. Number of product introduction per quarter went up from 22 to 47. Average throughput time went fantastically improved from six days to four and a half hours. Average time for impactful decision making, three days to four hours. We trained them, first three months we did nothing but train them on lean, agile, and the agile mind mindset. We trained everybody in, in those organizations, bottom to top. Top need, needed more training, actually. And Cutting down OS, we found the average inventory 16 days went down to two days and average waiting time four hours in certain cases went down to 0 0.25 hours. Average work in progress two days to 0 0.1 days. And we found most of them are paper full processes. They generate papers and the papers travel from one desk to another. And at the end, still continuing, the work is still continuing on 12 months we found the number of paperless processes were 730. So that was the result of implementation of the thoughts uh, uh, before and after. So conclusion, conclusion is the SMEs of the backbone of economy, as we know, generates 50% of employment, 50% of GDP, 90% of business. The seven recommendations arised out of our research can help in mitigating their plight in the post-pandemic scenario. We never say those seven are seven. We are just, we are just uh, uh, provoking the minds of the people uh, that this may be one of the direction because the researches are based on sampling, as you know. And so therefore, this only sets a direction and it, 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 it leads to certain thought process. So our job was to lead, lead the, lead the uh, fraternity, lead the group to a thought process. So it is never that seven will remain seven. It may become five or it may add or it may delete. An application and implementation of the simplified quality technology tools have proved to be more effective for MSME in the post-pandemic scenario. Again, it is based on sampling, based on response analysis, based on people who were involved in this research. But direction is same. It requires a simplification of the processes 
particularly for the micro small industries in post pandemic they have to be more agile more lean more they should run faster and they should melt out all the fat in the systems and they should be customer centric they have to understand how to become customer centric so the takeaways if i am permitted to say you should have acquired fairly good idea of perils faced by MSME and SME sector during COVID-19 pandemic. Your comprehended application of easy to understand research, very easy research methodologies we used for prioritizing the pertinent quality tools suitably adopted for MSME to benefit out of the situation. Learned how application of suitable quality technology tools can tide this sector out from crisis and take it to a trajectory of growth assimilated how to evolve a framework for rejuvenation of MSMEs through judicious application of recommended strategies, I would say more on strategies. And this is the speaker contract. And we have uh, wonderful upcoming UMD webinars, which I think Taub has to. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. This. Uh... Let's let's do some questions at this point. I think I think we might have a few out there. Uh, some people were asking about questions or slides. If you want slides, you want to email. Why don't we can can we back up the slide here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, here I can I can take the presenter role. And do that. So we're we're looking for questions. We'd like people to, uh, you know, in in the Q, question and answer window, we'd like you to put your questions in there, uh, and we will. We'll take a look at, at what you're asking here in just a moment. We've got the uh, contact information up here if you're interested. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, if there's any anybody has any questions for for, go through. We can ask them at this point. Uh, I did have one earlier. Um, there was uh, one individual asked a question about. Uh, are um, you know were you were you looking at manufacturing SMEs or manufacturing and service or manufacturing service and IT? Yeah, uh, what we found was that that in the region or the in the emerging markets, uh, most uh, companies are shifting out from pure manufacturing to manufacturing and service, and many are shifting to uh, information technology, software industries. So our recommendations or our work was based on all these three types of segments, like the manufacturing uh, service industry, which is growing, and as well as the software industries. So in my deliberation, we have tried to combine all of them and by and large, they are all linked. The recommendation which work for manufacturing also work for uh, service. Only the terminology changes and the methods of application changes and in IT industries as well. Okay. Um, thank you. That, would, that answers several questions we've had. Um, here, here, here's one that just came in. Um, you know, Melissa asks, while there are good points about the growth of SMEs and how reliant we are becoming on their supply, do you have any comments on the reverse? In other words, uh, are we becoming more reliant on, on large companies? She says, I'm also seeing a lot of major corporations absorbing smaller companies and taking over those SMEs that used to be suppliers. Are you seeing any of that? Yeah. Uh, what we found was that uh, uh, SMEs are growing much faster, much, much faster than the large companies. And, uh, but what we found was that uh, if, we, if we look at developed countries and the 
developed markets, I won't say countries, developed markets and uh, emerging markets, we found two different scenarios. What we found was in a emerging markets, the grammar is completely different, if I am permitted to say so, than a developed market. In developed markets are more complacent. In the emerging markets, they are very agile. They are challenging their own business model. But both markets are growing much faster, much faster than the uh, than the large companies. And but then the nature in which they are growing in a uh, developed uh, developed economy and an emerging economy are different. We found in a emerging economy mergers and acquisitions are more. In developed economies, mergers and uh, mergers and acquisitions, they weigh, they look at, and then they get into the thing. We found the involvement of the involvement of the families uh, in a MSME, particularly in the micro sector, in a uh, in a uh, in a emerging market, is much more than what we found is in the developed markets because. They more rely on the hired professionals, the board, company boards. What we found was that in the emerging markets, they more depend on family councils. It is a completely different concept. Uh, they take the good points of a uh, uh, of a uh, you know of a professional board, but they work in a different way. They have the family councils. So these are the different. But yes, to answer the questions. Uh, that uh, there are many good, uh, many, many good points with the structure of the SMEs. They take quick decisions and they are growing much faster than the large, large companies uh, in many ways. But yes, there is a difference if we took, look at uh, developing mar developed markets and emerging markets. There is again a sharp difference between the two markets. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, we've get, we're getting a lot of questions and if people have questions we do not get to by the end, uh, you may send an email to uh, Gautam and ask, ask your questions of him directly. Here's, here's another one from Craig. Uh, he says, uh, there are so many tools and methods covered here, it seems potentially overwhelming. What would be the sequential steps where an organization can steadily ramp up their portfolio of skills? Yeah, now it's a very interesting and very good question. Now, uh, what uh, what uh, I would uh, say is that uh, there are many tools, uh, but then before you go and implement any of the tool, firstly you should you should go for organization scanning and remove some of the uh, some of the you know blockers from the organization. So we found that. Uh, that needs the, that is the top priority. We found there there are many uh, blockers in the system, and until we change those, you try to automate a process, and you automate a process where there are OS, then you generate much faster. So there is no uh, quick uh, there is no quick formula that you take this 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 and in this 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 sequence. You do an organization scanning. That's another subject, and then look at. What are the what are your objectives and what are, what is blocking you from growth, and go for that. But there are certain generic things which you must implement. I will strongly recommend those things which we showed you, like your agile mindset. You must have an agile mindset. You must have a mindset which is customer focused, and that's we found was, it was not very common in many of the uh, companies. Uh, so that particularly the uh, MSMEs, which are led by formal managers coming from large companies. So you need to look at that. That that is the that is my answer. And there is no uh, quick uh, uh, formula that you do this from this to this and from that to that because you need to understand where where the particular MSME is at the moment and how do you really take him from here to there. Uh, I'll put a, uh, a a plug in here for uh, ASQ has certifications in Lean and Six Sigma uh, in Lean, and that they can help uh, learn these tools. Here's here's an interesting question. Kind of follows on that one, and we'll finish with this one. Uh, 
So uh, what are some of the challenges that these uh, micro SMEs in implementing or sustaining some of these lean and Six Sigma methodologies? What do you see as some of their challenges? Yeah, very interesting question. The challenges come, challenges come uh, from the from the management, but more also from the workmen because what happens is that uh, the, in this kind of uh, in this kind of system in which they work, the owner or the the families or the people who are at the uh, who are at the helm of the affair, they do not have proper understanding that how until you show them until you tell them this is the cash which you are getting back you have to take them to that level and once they understand this this is how the cash will come back they will work very fast but then we need to make them understand that this is where the wastes are moving and this is what you should do and until we uh, until they are convinced because they will they themselves will not permit you to move in we are in our samples we have seen units who have uh, the even the management of those units are where because until you show them talk in the language of money so we said you you uh, leave it to us we'll run it run your show for some time and they show the result and they said yes we are for it and there is another problem there's some regions the you know there are certain trade union issues but then there you need to first educate the trade unions because you know there's some region not all region so they want to understand that whether they, it will affect the their pay their employment etc etc and when you tell them that no it is works in a different way it will it will enhance your uh, your uh, earnings then so it's a tough job tough job to uh, convince both the ends because it is not a large company where the professionals are highly exposed and highly qualified trained here some of them are not so you need to spend more time in training both the ends the top end and the bottom end both okay thank you very much i, I you've answered a number of the questions if people have more questions then uh, please post them uh, afterward. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of final slides here. Uh, we have some upcoming webinars um, <clears throat> and a couple of closing uh, slides here. Uh, there's three of them coming up. There, there will be more as we as we get them set up. I wanted to remind everybody of this. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to close the recording at this point.